All right, my friends, welcome back to Frog Boy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and I wanted to talk to you guys today about the exciting news from AMD. So I know I know that a lot of people are like, oh man, they're kind of on the fence about maybe switching or, or maybe switching from NVIDIA, buying an AMD card, um, especially like buying the, seven, the 7000 series cards, you know, kind of on the fence, not knowing what FSR4 is gonna do. But we actually have a little bit more information. So I've been reading a lot of open GPU stuff, um, a lot of a lot of information on WMMA, which is essentially achievable on both RDNA 2 as well as RDNA 3 GPUs. And <clears throat> it said that you know, one way or another, FSR4 is probably going to be able to work on both of those. Like right now they're showing, um, there was this paper and I, and I reached out to this guy because I want some more information. Like I'm, I've been trying to, to like really get into this and really figure this out. But when you look at the, um, when you, when you look at what WMMA is, is possible, it's, it's, it, it can do like the 16 bit, the 8-bit, the 4-bit, it can do it can do all of that. It can do the machine learning, all of that stuff. They were showing this uh, this um, scene created with path tracing and everything, um, and you know, like. But this was just a, the denoiser part of like the FSR4, showing that the uh, that that the AMD GPUs absolutely can do this type of rendering and stuff like that. And when you look at it, when you're looking at it, because you you know, if you if you've got the uh, if you've got an Nvidia GPU, you've got the uh, the ray reconstruction pretty much the same thing like they, they're using a an, an ai de, um denoiser or whatever to sharpen up the the overall image quality because once you upscale it it, it breaks apart uh when you when you flip on dlss it kind of breaks apart the uh, the overall um ray tracing or whatever and it kind of just makes it look you know not not as sharp not as cohesive it it, it just makes it you know it takes more um, it takes more processing power to try to, to, to be able to, you know, like to, <laughs> to, to display the, 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 uh, the ray tracing or whatever. And, and, and I mean, early adopters of ray tracing have noticed this, you know, in games that don't have ray reconstruction, you can see that the ray tracing, at least in terms of the overall, um, um, the the uh, the reflections and stuff don't usually look as clean or as sharp as as they normally would in like a real reflection like obviously you get the reflections but they just don't look clean enough i mean the perfect example is to to go try um cyberpunk 2077 with ray reconstruction versus not having ray reconstruction on and you can definitely see a difference in the terms of like the overall reflection quality uh, so, so when they when they show this kind of stuff on the AMD side of things, AMD is very far behind when it comes to like ray tracing, when it comes to AI upscaling, and all of those things. But at the same time, you know the the AMD GPU pricing is is a lot better to where on on GPUs that you would buy on Nvidia, you absolutely would have to use like DLSS and 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 all of that stuff. But getting the same you know, buy, buying the same type of card on the AMD side, you know, at least um, depending on what time it is in the cycle, um, <clears throat> you could go anywhere from, you know, <clears throat> um, a, a, a decent, you know, just having like a decent margin and over and above what, what you can get on the Nvidia side for the same money. And, and I don't think a lot of people really, really look at it that way because it's like, if you go out right now, for eight hundred dollars, you can get a um, you you can get the forty seventy Ti Super from the Nvidia side, which which isn't a bad card at all. I mean, by any means, like the, it uh, that's a that's an awesome card. It's basically a shaved down uh, forty eighty Super or forty eighty or something. But if you look at that same prospect on the AMD side right now with current prices, you can get the seventy nine hundred XTX, which is a much better investment for your for your money i mean yes obviously you'll still have better ray tracing performance on the 70 4070 ti ti super but everything literally everything else will be better on the amd gpu right now plus you'll be able to get features like the um, um fsr you know fsr 3.1 fsr 4 when it comes out um, you'll, you'll, you'll have instant access to AFMF where you can use frame generation on all DX11, 12, 
OpenGL and uh, Vulkan games now. So, so you'll be able to do a lot more with that with that GPU to be able to, uh, to 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 at least stabilize your overall experience when you're playing games. So, we also do have the first game that will be coming to um, FSR four, which is Call of Duty Black Ops six. So the thing is, and, and this is, you know, kind of what's got me a little bit excited. I'm like, is AMD really going to launch FSR 4 before RDNA 4 comes out? Could they do that? Is that even, I mean, would, would they do that? And, and part of me thinks, yeah, they definitely would. Why wouldn't they? But then part of me thinks, well, no, they, they want to save it for there. I personally think that, I personally think that it would be better to launch it before RDNA 4 launches on RDNA 2, RDNA 3, just so we can make people like D-Batch look, look dumb <clears throat> for, for, for not understanding what, what they're talking about. And then, you know, or, or make me look dumb for saying that it could do it and then, and then it wouldn't do it. Like, I mean, both of us are speculating or all of us are how you're speculating. But with the research that I've done on AMD in their AI department, like I feel confident that FSR 4 is going to work on FSR2 or, or on RDNA2, on RDNA3. I don't think it's going to work as well, you know, on like RDNA2 definitely will work better on RDNA3. I kind of feel like it's going to be the same solution that's in the PS5 Pro with, with PSSR, seeing as the fact that like when you look at how the AMD stack is built, even if, even if the PlayStation 5 Pro is actually RDNA 3, which I highly doubt, I think it's still RDNA 2, but it is souped up. It's going to have, you know, RDNA bits and RDNA 4 bits in there, RDNA 3 and RDNA 4. I feel like, I feel like it's still technically RDNA 2, but the CUs are, you know, more, more in line or more tuned to where they would be with like RDNA 3, but then the ray tracing is tuned to where it would be with, with RDNA 4. I kind of think it's like a Franken monster, um, hybrid console, just because of the fact that like, the original PS5 is on RDNA 2. I kind of feel like they needed to keep some sort of similarity in terms of overall, you know, just, just design for these two to be compatible or cross compatible in a way that like, in a way, in a way that like keeps them in the same generation or whatever. I, I mean, I, I could be completely wrong. You know, they could be 100% RDNA 3 with RDNA 4, but you know, I mean, it wouldn't, I mean, it, it wouldn't be like, I, I mean, that wouldn't be like, um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be upset if it was, to be completely honest, I'd be a lot happier if it was, but I, I just kind of have a feeling that the PlayStation is doing what they normally do. I have trust issues with PlayStation, so I don't just blindly follow, you know, anybody anymore. But when, when I look at like the overall experience that you can expect to get and out of out of PSSR, it just kind of to me it looks like that extra power that went into the PlayStation 5 Pro is literally being used, all of it, just to crank out the PSSR upscaling, which which is like which is weird because you're not getting any kind of extra upgrades whatsoever in image quality from what we've seen so far above and beyond what the performance mode in these games already is. So that would be like, wait a minute. We got forty five percent more power, or or, but we can't get, we can't get better blades of grass. We can't get like higher quality textures. We, we can't get anything that we've lost, you know, like the shadows or anything. We can't get none of that back, and then have PSSR upscale it because on DLSS, that upscaler works in tandem across the board. It's it's weird. I don't know. But then again, you know, that's that's the way games look when they go <laughs> when they when they come out on when they come out on DLSS, it's like they go from native and they lose some of that stuff to get DLSS. I don't know. I don't know, my friends. But yeah, Call of Duty 4 or Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will be the first game to have FSR 4. That's that's incredible. Um, AMD, you know, FSR 4 essentially running all the way back as far as RDNA 2. That is very cool that if, if AMD can pull that off, that literally extends the life of their of their RDNA 2, RDNA 3, and RDNA 4 GPUs, giving those people who bought in to that even more of a reason to be like excited. Um, 
obviously once once uh once fsr4 comes out there will be a lot more um, i think developers will be a lot more excited to start implementing that faster than they are doing with um, fsr 3.1 i just kind of feel like they've been waiting for that uh, so so i would like to see that happen and that that definitely can close the gap and if and if wmma is is really you know good enough to be able to to do all of the stuff obviously it's going to have to share compute with the shaders and you know the results are definitely going to vary but it does sound like rdna 4 is going to have hardware that actually accelerates um, i mean all of them have hardware that actually accelerates but maybe separate hardware that that doesn't rely on the shaders and stuff to to do the to do the ai upscaling either way it's going to be a bonus either way it's going to give you better image quality so the nvidia bros won't be able to be like yeah we got sparkly crispy cream blah blah, blah but but maybe amd will have crispy graphics too so i don't know guys i i i personally still am, am at a point in life that i don't really necessarily care as much about upscalers but a lot of people make a big deal about it a lot of people make a big deal about it there's a lot of you know there's there's a lot of people out there spending lots of money on gpus that they could have 100 percent not even needed to buy that if they weren't relying on these these upscalers i feel like they would get more bang for their buck uh going with an amd option and that's just the way i've looked at it since going amd myself i've i've had nothing but um uh, I've had nothing but a good time over on the AMD side, getting way more bang for my bucks. So I get it, man. Like I, I, I look at that. There's, there's influences out there that influence people to do stuff. I mean, I'm just one person, and uh, I happen to like AMD. I happen to really like the uh, the overall experience that AMD delivers. So that's why I rock AMD. I could definitely get Nvidia if I wanted it, but I think I like AMD. So all right, my friends. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. See you guys later.